Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode, the second episode of Hermitcraft Season 7. And a very common question I get early on in the season is, why is your episode number so high? It is simply because I've been playing since Season 1, and I don't reset my episode number with each season. So this is like the 883rd if I've remembered the number correctly. And we're on top of our jungle area. And as you'll see in my hotbar, I have a bow. A bow and arrow. In fact, I've got plenty of arrows. So many so, I've also got loads of bones as well. And that's because we've got a skeleton spawner under the world here that I have been grinding. In fact, I've kind of made an accidental farm for this, which is really cool. And what I want to do in this episode is convert it into an XP farm as well, so we can start to enchant all of our armor. I, I did one little piece right here, and I'd like to get some more. Maybe even get our hands on more diamonds and make our first set of diamond armor. And of course, also, we've got to address the situation with the bees and the nests over there in the distance. I've actually cleared out a little path to walk all the way through to that area. It is surprisingly tricky to navigate this jungle, but anyway, we're going to head down to the bottom of the world. And it is down here where I have found a skeleton spawner and then turned it into a grinder. And uh, here it is. And there they are. They're spawning. Now, the way that I accidentally made a farm was in the process of setting this all up. I put a slab in the wrong position and then they started shooting each other. <laughs> and they can't actually shoot me. Their arrow shots always go into this slab right here. So I have literally just stood here. AFK doing absolutely nothing and letting the skeletons shoot each other and then the drops just come through the water stream to me like that arrow did right there. It's absolutely fantastic but we need to upgrade this thing so we can start to get some XP from it. And I was watching a video by Il Mango where he kind of went back to the basics. You know the guy usually does a lot of advanced stuff in this game and he went back to this old classic design of farm and realize that there are some inefficiencies that can be addressed and ways you can make it a little bit faster. So we're going to do that. We're going to make sure we make a very optimal farm here. So the problem with skeletons is that they can spawn in this position right here and stand on top of the mob spawner. And then they take up part of the mob cap, which slows down the rates of these. So the usual thing that I've always done and many other players do is just put a pillar here to stop them from doing that. Well, Il Mango crunched the numbers and that actually slows down the spawn rate overall by about four to five percent and do you know what if you're going to use this farm right from the beginning of the server getting an additional four to five percent of drops will add up in the long run so what we're going to do is use this flushing design where we put redstone over these blocks right here i've done them deliberately with this block for now so i know not to break them later as they're going to have redstone on top of them and we'll get the redstone signal from a tripwire hook that goes across the middle of the room here so when a skeleton spawns in this position, it activates the tripwire and then that opens this trap door up the top here, as you can see. And what we're going to do is simply waterlog this. So this means that water is going to drop down right next to where the skeleton spawns. So then what we have to do is go and put some open fence gates around here to channel the water onto where the mob is standing and these things they have a hitbox but when they're open it doesn't actually invalidate spawning so it means it doesn't affect the rates of the mob spawning in here so now you can see we've put these on all sides let's break the cobblestone and then i will simulate being a skeleton again did that break the trip wire uh, that might have been me that broke it there you go and it pushes me off so skeleton spawns here and then it gets pushed off so the next thing for me to do is to upgrade this trap. We're going to put in an elevator here to take them up and drop them down to the one-hit kill, turning it into a fantastic XP farm. And this is just hilarious. <laughs> They're just attacking each other and they can't actually hit me. I love it. Oh, it's so funny. So those bones are going to come in useful for growing trees faster. And as you'll see over here, we have a few bees' nests, but not a crazy amount. And if I start to clear... Wow, one right in front of us. <laughs> that just popped into existence. If I start to clear out these trees, we'll get a better idea of how many we've got so far. Well, okay then. Let's have a quick head count over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in total. And I feel like I have chopped down a heck of a lot of trees. 
Now the odds should be 1 in 20 and it feels like less than that. I could have potentially have counted each time I chopped a tree down, but look at how much birch I've collected over here. Also, there's a bunch in there. I raided that desert temple off in the distance. I've also moved stacks of logs back to the other area. So I feel like I've chopped down more than enough to get more bees nests than this, which got me thinking. We know that if the flower is in range of the sapling, that it gives it the opportunity to create a bees nest. But what if it doesn't actually like look directly at where the flower is. So this is where that bone mill will come into play. I'm going to conduct some tests and grow some trees with the bone mill. And I'm just kind of hoping that maybe by having more flowers around it, it'll increase the odds. Probably not, but you know what? I don't mind chopping down some trees. My axe has perished and not a single bee's nest came of this. It's almost ridiculous. The, the rate of actually getting one is really really low oh <laughs> and then after all that time we get one on camera hey the last couple we've actually got have been on camera maybe it's a good luck charm to record anyway the point here is that i can now use our bone mill supply to grow all of these trees and get ourselves more bees nests now i am anticipating that some of you might say why don't you just craft a beehive well the deal with that is it wouldn't have any bees. So when we get bees nests, we also get bees. I think that lava might have ate that diamond. But anyway, the reason that I'm down here is to make a nether portal. The next thing that we need is silk touch so we can move the bees and the bees nests to a new location, which is obviously going to be some sort of honey farm, right? And so for that reason, we need to go to the nether as I need to get my hands on some soul sand so that we can make a mob elevator for the skeleton grinder, which is just down here. Now, I haven't been to the nether yet, and so I've got some extra obsidian in case I need to make a portal to get directly back to this spot. Now, instead of having to do F3 and all the math, we've got the data pack on the server, and I can type in... NC for nether coordinates in overworld and it will tell me what the coordinates of this location are equivalent in the nether So I can then use those numbers to make a portal to get back So let's hop on through chances are we're probably going to link up with someone else's portal who's already been here And there you go. We're at 68. So we're not low down in the world. There's another portal over there So hermits have definitely been in this area. Someone's even gone into a nether fortress. Wow people are flying through um, so we need to find some soul sand somewhere. Hopefully I won't have to go too far. There it is, my friends. Soul sand. Whew. That took a while. I also found some quartz on the way here and I was reminded of what a great source of XP that is. And here I am grinding away trying to make an XP farm. Now I only need a little bit, but I'm probably going to need some more later on, right? So might as well grab a couple stacks while I'm here. And there's also these magma blocks. This will actually be useful for the farm as well. A way to kill them when we're not using the grinder in XP mode. So might as well grab a bunch of these as well. So we took our nether coordinates for the portal. And I think it was a very good idea. I've just assembled this one. And it's quite far away from the other one. So no doubt it would have taken us far away to somewhere else in the overworld. Excellent. Okay. That is good. It hooks up with our base here. We, my friends, have now got our skeleton grinder hooked up. Yes, this place is absolutely hideous. You know me, I like to decorate my projects. That'll come in the future. And check out how simple the redstone is. If you want XP mode, just press that button. If you want them to automatically die, press the other one. But yes, on this one over here, they'll land on the stone block, and that means that I can attack them and collect their XP. So now what we're going to do is bring our enchanting setup down here. And we're going to try and get ourselves Silk Touch on a pick. And then that means we can pick up those bees nests. Well, this is almost perfect, my friends. I have enchanted all of my armor, doing dud enchants between getting us a fortune free pick. No other enchantment on there. And then in the middle, we have Silk Touch, which is exactly what we need. So I'm going to take that and no surprise, there's no other enchantment with it. And that means that we can now move those bees nests. You know what? I am a colossal derp. I continuously learn things the hard way in this game. I realise that this is the wrong biome. The biome type that you grow your trees in 
affects the rate at which you'll get the bees nest. So we're getting them even slower than 5% over here. So we'll have to move this operation to another biome. But the operation is going really well. A moment ago, all of the bees were inside of their nests. And that's something we've got to consider when we silk touch them. So this one kind of looks like it might have all the bees inside. And I don't think there really is a way to tell unless you were used to use cheaty commands or something like that. But that one should have some bees inside of it now. Now when it comes to harvesting stuff out of here, you need to have a campfire below. So if we go and plop one down below this one, hopefully that'll do it. I should now be able to get some honey. And what I plan on doing is harvesting the honey, creating honey blocks, and being able to sell them. <laughs> that is my plan. That's how we're going to make some diamonds this season. The other thing we can do as well is shear them. And that will give us honeycombs, which will be less popular, but we can make honeycomb blocks with those. Something else I might be able to sell. And then there's another way to get them out of here, which is to use the dispenser. So then you wouldn't need the aid of the campfire, which stops the bees from becoming angry. So let's go ahead and put our honey bottle in here. And then we'll create a button with that and whack it on the side. And it goes back into the dispenser, right? Yes, excellent. So this is our master plan. However, what I'm going to do right now is wait around for the bees to go inside the nests and then harvest them with silk touch. And that's something that should happen when the sun goes down. However, it kind of looks like there's only one or two of them out at the moment. So when this one goes back in, it probably means that bee's nest is full. I think a couple of these bee's nests are empty because look, they stack together. Now they can only stack together if they have the identical information and all the mobs in the world are unique. So we know that these ones have bees inside of them and then these two here, for some reason, don't. I have on occasion seen the bees just go off into the distance. So perhaps they've just flown into the jungle and who knows what their fate is. So I think it's time now to switch gears and perhaps go on a little bit of an adventure. I've introduced you to the main area over here. And of course, we've resettled in this jungle biome, which I'm going to be building on. I also want to use this island over here. And as you can see, it has a stronghold. And inside that stronghold, I was thinking, well, there's going to be chests full of goodies. And I kind of feel like doing a little bit of raiding in the surrounding area, finding shipwrecks and temples, and then just gathering together some loot. So the first thing we're going to do is head over to this stronghold. The jungle biome is really interesting from a survival perspective. It's so dense that traversing through it, you really need to make paths. And I've been putting down torches and kind of clearing out leaves here and there and creating a clear pathway that I can follow through this place. And as you can see, I've just reached the ocean over here. Now, I also thought ahead and gathered some obsidian. So we've got to go straight out over there to the other island, which we can't actually see from here. But when we get to the stronghold, I can make a portal. So I don't always have to take this long trip. My friends, I think we found Minecraft's smallest stronghold. This is really not big at all. We've got a dead end over here. Behind me, there's this little room that leads to a dead end staircase. It's a dead end through this corridor down here. And then back in this room where I stole the water from the water fountain, there is a library at the bottom of the stairs, but no other rooms. The stronghold is to my left. And then there is another dead end around the corner here. It is ridiculously small, but there are a couple. And the loot is terrible as well. <laughs> the loot is terrible. Let's go check the library. So the bookshelves themselves are prizes, I guess, early on. This is the only chest inside the library. More books. That ain't so bad, I guess, but no good loot here. So I do want to go to the end dimension soon, and now we've got our portal set up. But yes, of course, it was over a lava lake. And yes, I was attacked by a ghast whilst building the netherrack you see at the bottom there. I had a mini heart attack. <laughs> So what I wanted to do next in this episode was go on a little bit of a raiding spree. And I went through the oceans, seeking out some ruins and some boats as well. And unfortunately, the loot here really wasn't actually that good. This is mostly stuff I've already gotten through branch mining, right? So it felt like I was wasting my time a little bit. And then I did manage to get a buried treasure map. However, the next three or four that I found were all for the same location. And I could have sworn that was a bug that they had fixed and each one of these was supposed to be unique but it wasn't so and when I got my buried treasure the only thing it really had was the heart of the sea and so I decided to head back to our base where there's actually a jungle temple just the other side of 
So I went and raided this, however someone had beat me to it, and the only thing left inside the temple was a single repeater. So it turned out not to be the best of activities, and maybe I should have just cracked on with what we're doing next, which is building our first bee farm. This right here, however, is my hall, and both of these buried treasure maps seem to have actually forgotten. Oh, there you go, and now it's remembered. And yeah, they just pointed to the same place, which was kind of disappointing. So, welcome everyone to my brand new testing world. I decided to reset this for Season 7 of Hermitcraft, and this is where we'll be conducting all of our creative mode experimentation. And I want to build a bee farm that has a feature that is considerate of the other hermits on the server, and that is the ability to turn it off. And I've been thinking about how this might work. So, first of all, what we're going to do is place down a block here, and notice how the bees inside of it immediately pop out. That's because of the way the date has been set up. Every time I put this here, the bees are going to pop out the front. And that's fantastic because it allows us to do some experimentation. And what I've learned is that if you block the front of the bees nest, then the bees aren't able to come out until you break the block in front of it. Now I knew about this from the snapshots, but now I'm getting my hands on, I've learned that this also works with a trapdoor. So we put a trapdoor there, it's not until this is removed or moved that the bees are then able to pop out. Now an interesting thing about the bees nest is that the bee is actually able to enter from any side. So that one that I just summoned went directly inside of the bees nest and when we break it, it then drops because there is a bee inside. So I thought we might need to make a system where they enter from the front, or sorry, exit from the front and enter from the top. However, it's even simpler than that. Let's go and put a trapdoor in the front here and then bring in our bees nest. Now let's imagine this gets moved upwards. What happens when it's moved back down again? Are the bees able to get back into the bees nest? So let's go ahead and summon a bee that has nectar right where that trapdoor is. It kind of looked like it was above it, but it went directly in. You know, I've tested this a couple of times already. Let's change this value here so it's a little bit lower. You can see it went straight in. Let's try it lower again. Essentially, when it's in that space there, it can go into the bee's nest. Problem now is that the bee's nest is actually full. So let's do that one more time, and you can see it's capable of going in. So when the trapdoor is in this position, the bees are able to get out, and when it's here, they're able to get back in. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't work with a situation like this, where we change the block in front of it, and that means that we actually require sticky pistons. Oops. <laughs> which is something that we might have to get later on and for now just work with the farm kind of manually to begin with. So a little bit of design and testing was in order and I kind of found that by having just one space for a flower, the bees could, if they pop out at the same time, get pushed into the glass. So what I've gone and done is given them this space here and then put a two tall flower in. So wherever they end up outside of the space that the trapdoor goes into, there is a flower and they can easily make their way back in. Then we've got some simple redstone where we use a comparator in subtract mode, a furnace with some junk items in, and that activates the dispenser up the top here. Now a challenge for us is that we actually need this to be filled up with glass bottles, or at least every single slot, because then the honey bottle will go back into the dispenser. And if it's all filled up, then the honey comes down here. And you can see I left it running for a while, and this will just slowly fill up the honey bowls. So one thing we've yet to do is really look at how big this jungle biome is from up in the sky. I'm using my spectator account and down below you can see the area of land that I've cleared out. The reason that I've cleared it is because obviously I need space to build. However, the plan for this base is to have builds sporadically spread out through the jungle. I have a build palette in mind that I'm going to be showing you in the future and then we're going to link them all together with paths and whatnot. I don't want to go into too much detail, but what we're going to build right now in this area will eventually have a giant structure around it. I gathered some two tall flowers earlier that we can grow with bone meal, and now I can't find them. So I'm heading out to grab some of that, and uh, I spot a slime down there. Do I have my water bucket? I do. I'm going to descend down. Oh! Oh! <laughs> okay. Okay, that just happened. Well, anyway... We need sticky pistons to move our trapdoors, so uh, you, my friend, are going to be harvested for slime juice. Well, I've had a redesign because I realized what I built in my test world was four blocks tileable, not three blocks, which is kind of what I'm doing here, or two. It depends on how you look at it, really. And anyways, I was just thinking this is going to be possible 
in 1.16 but not in 1.15 right now it'll pop off so i've got a bunch of levers to keep these trapdoors down and then the next challenge is really just how do we place the bees nest now i was fearful that when i break the blocks the bees are going to immediately fly out but with the trapdoor in the way that shouldn't be a problem so we should simply just be able to come into position like this got to avoid the hitbox of the flower and then place our bees nest let's actually do one of these together i've got to just click right there it's facing forward put that back and fill in the glass and then we'll open the trap door well the bees should now be free to come out i'll uh, keep an eye on that also nothing's going to happen here because there's no bottles yeah i i've got to i've got to find a desert get some glass and make some bottles so before heading out, did a little enchanting, got myself a diamond shovel if I'm breaking in efficiency so we can come over here and do that. That is so satisfying and just uh, instant mine some sand away. So look at this, whole inventory full of glass. This reminds me of like Endgame Hermitcraft Season 6, just having loads and loads of resources, you know. It's not quite the same here early on, but we've got a large amount of dispensers, which is actually kind of a downside of this type of farm you need so many bottles just to get it up and running it's crazy and so my friends the farm is up and running a little test run confirms that it is producing honey bottles and you know what happens in between episodes right <laughs> afk time i want these bees to be buzzing away doing their work and producing some honey for us and in the future we're of course going to be expanding this farm doing amazing things in this area decorating this is just me getting straight into building a farm, so please excuse the, the janky jungle planks. They're, they're not very pretty, are they? Anyway, that is it from me this episode of Hermitcraft. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed yourself. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.